All right, we've got a light box here, a Canyon design light box. Did one of these a little while ago uh, with the design of a chameleon in a jungle. And this one is uh, a little bit bigger, definitely in width uh, than that one, but same principle. You've got LED light strip, the whole bunch of card stock in front of it being uh, spaced out by one quarter inch uh, foam core spacers. So this was uh, definitely a little bit different, a little bit uh, more of a challenge, but uh, had some issues along the way with measuring, but that's how it looks with the lights on. Turn that off and you can see all of the uh, layers there. Did 18 layers in all. And thought the uh, design of a canyon would be perfect for this type of uh, art project where you've got all the layers, you look at a canyon, and, and it just seems perfect uh, for this type of uh, uh, design. So there you can really see the uh, separation of the layers, the uh, quarter inch gap in uh, creating that depth. That's how it looks with the lights completely on. So let's uh, get started in creating this light box canyon. So here just measuring out the uh, cardstock layers. So this measurement did not change, but the measurement of the box did. So based this on the uh, chameleon within a jungle light box project that I did a little while ago. So some of the measurements I tried to have similar in the uh, depth, but the width obviously with uh, the canyon light box being a lot longer. So I wanted to uh, create both of these with the idea of being able to take out the design as in not permanently glue them in. So here you want to make sure that the box itself is a little bit bigger so that the design has got a little bit of room in case there's some warping. So these measurements um, were the original measurements that were a little bit off and I'll show you that uh, here in a bit. But that's one of the, I guess, benefits of watching, you know, a video like this. You can learn from the mistakes that the individual has made. So, but you're trying to create four pieces there in, in the attempt to uh, create a box. And with foam core, it, it has a uh, tendency to warp. So with the longer pieces, sometimes weighting it down uh, before you get started. So here you, uh, you see that, um, measurement, I guess, mistake, instead of it being about an eighth of an inch too big, which is what you want to give the uh, design room, it's an eighth, eighth of an inch too small. So instead of uh, just creating or cutting out a new piece that would fit, what you can do, if you're cheap like me, is just create a little extension that gives you the proper measurement. So the box itself from the outside doesn't look great but this type of project it's really more important because you know you're just going to turn the lights off and it's all about really the design inside so creating a little bit of an extension in order to uh, get the proper measurement of those uh, pieces so usually with every project i do a little bit of a design in advance and like I said in the beginning, uh, canyons seem perfect for this type of uh, layered art piece. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the sides on and trying to make sure that you know I set it up so that it dries uh, as um, as perfect as possible using a level to try to make sure that it is you know, as perfect a box shape as I can get. You can already tell it's a little bit off there. But like I say, you're really more concerned with trying to create a, uh, a box that will trap the light. So, created a whole bunch of little pieces, well four, in order to uh, edge out the design and trying to create a frame. So I have these uh, quarter inch thick pieces of foam core going all around the box just in trying to create that frame. So this is an accurate uh, measurement of the actual layers. 
that I ended up cutting out. And so in keeping in mind and keeping track that you need a quarter inch border that I'll show later around uh, each piece. So I have more of a uh, detailed design there. I'm going to start the first layer and really just drawing out a horizon line and then building uh, from that point. So all of these layers really were uh, done out of order. So I would do a layer and then realize I might need a layer before that or one after or this doesn't, you know, this isn't working and then maybe change it up. And so one of the ways you can uh, do this is trying to have one layer on top of another. But uh, cutting out, you can see there, the sides, making sure that you've got a quarter inch uh, border because that is what you'll end up using in order to glue the dividers on there. So here just using a layer on top of another layer to uh, figure out where you're at as far as the design because sometimes in this case it came down to like millimeters uh, drawing out the sun there. So that's all there is to that particular layer is just this one little opening of a circle. So drawing out this design, I knew I wanted this, even though this is um, in the front. So jumping ahead to what I know I'm going to uh, want in the, uh, in the piece. And then, like I say, layers being out of order, uh, creating layers before this and then after. So here, putting them together with, you know, holding them together with clothespins and seeing that you've got some, quite a few empty areas where you need something going on there. So one way of doing it, since you can't use, you know, tracing paper, you, you have to use some sort of method where you're measuring from like the right to the left and then from like the top uh, to the bottom and creating like these crosshairs using the measurements and then putting those on top of a new uh, cardstock sheet and then realizing that at that point there needs to be some sort of area of uh, emphasis. So that is where we were, or where I was looking at, uh, and that's where that ended up going. And then other layers where you, you know it's going to be blocked by most of what's in front of it and yet pop up, uh, you know, at a different area towards the right there. So all of that in between is not going to be shown so right on the left, that'll be shown, and then that huge gap will just be covered up by another layer. So drawing really quickly, because I know I'm just going to cut that out. It won't be seen, because it'll be covered up. So it appears over there on the left, and then pops up over there on the right. So noticing here, again, when all of the layers are put together, that you've got a gap or an empty spot, space that uh, needs something in order for the entire piece to kind of look balanced and so putting that in there measuring it out as to where it should go it's just kind of like connecting the dots so be sure and uh, watch this intermission all right time for intermission i've had these in a number of videos in the past as i feel compelled to share the most important thing anyone could ever know in this life and that's that God is real and this world and your life is not an accident. Think about what some of us have been taught in school and elsewhere. That the concept of nothing somehow created everything. That somehow unguided nothing combined with time and chance brought us to where we are now. It really seems like to a lot of us to be a plausible explanation of how everything came to be. And yet there are many issues. One of which is that scientists have not been able to recreate the basic human cell from scratch. Too complex, too intricate and elaborate. Some would say that they shouldn't have to start from scratch. The problem with that is, nothing did. According to their worldview that there is no creator, nothing started from scratch. Even if they were able to do this successfully tomorrow, wouldn't it still be surprising and compelling that it took this long to do it? When you take everything into consideration, the buildup of intelligence over the years, the pooling of the minds, which is to say the building upon what a scientist has discovered who came before you, 
the money and technology we have today. Human beings can't do it, and yet we are to believe that somehow unguided nothing did. I understand how someone could believe that a canyon, for example, happened by chance. Even though I obviously like canyons, think they are fascinating, and believe God created them, but I can also understand how someone could think they are just accidental formations that happened over time. A river takes the path of least resistance and carves out a canyon. No real decisions were made there. But we know there were decisions made when the human body was formed. Decisions that the concept of nothing could never make. The decision of having blood in the body. The decisions that blood would carry oxygen and nutrients to the cells. Thousands of decisions had to be made, all needing the element of intelligence to be carried out. Quite different from how a natural canyon may have been formed. If there is a creator, then you're not an accident. If there is a creator, then what you do and say matters. In the Bible, Matthew 12:36 says, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. This presents a problem without the idea of a Savior. Thankfully, the Bible also mentions a Savior, Jesus Christ, who paid for your sins and mine when he died on the cross for all humanity. He is asking that you believe in this, repent of what you have said and done, and turn towards godly living, which is to say, turn against sin. Please research this online. There are so many testimonies of heaven and hell. As I've said in another video in the past, start off by thinking of this in a somewhat selfish manner. Don't you at least owe it to yourself to research where you may or may not end up upon leaving this world? Thanks for listening. All right, so using a uh, preview sled, this is something I go over in much greater detail in the uh, Chameleon Within a Jungle uh, light box that's also on the channel. So this just really enables you to see, you know, is this working? Is the design working? Are the layers working together? Because you can have this spaced apart, not as perfectly as it's going to be when it's, you know, uh, glued together. But this will help you decide, you know, is this working? To, does there need to be another layer in between, for example, like seven and eight, that would uh, help balance uh, the look of the design out. So in putting that together and then putting that into the box, turning the LED light strip on, you can, gives you an idea. And from that, uh, creating another couple of layers and realizing that it needed uh, some sort of foreground with some plant life and to really add, you know, some contrast. If you look at the final, you see all of that in the foreground being almost completely black. And so really creating some depth with uh, other layers. And I don't know that I would have necessarily known to do that without that way of previewing it. So here using a little bit of leftover cardstock underneath all these little really small fragile uh, areas of the design of the foreground instead of just having uh, styrofoam underneath it having another layer of basically this exact same material of cardstock in order to give it more stability when you're cutting it out so and then sometimes with it being so thin uh, needing to uh, bend this back into being uh, flush with the other section of the layer so putting that together again, just easier way of previewing it is just holding it together with closed pins. But of course, since I've already got this, I'm going to put this together, uh, turn on the LED strip and see if there's anything more. And from that, just noticing there needed to be another, maybe one or two small layers in the, uh, in the front. So moving on to the, uh, cutting out of all of the dividers. So I had 18 layers, so roughly 72 uh, layers, half of them being you know the length of the project, the other half being the, the height. And just 
roughly a quarter inch thick. So cutting out the, the longer ones and the, uh, the smaller ones. And so process is really just putting down the first layer there, the one with the sun cut out, and then gluing on the, the spacers, the dividers, and then putting on the, uh, well, putting more glue first onto those uh, dividers and then applying the second layer. So this is really the process of how this goes uh, for all 18. Just over and over again, you're gluing down dividers and then uh, the next layer. And so it's something whereby you really need to pay attention to this because it kind of uh, turns into a, a little bit of a mindless you know, activity where you're listening to music or something. And so what can happen is it can start to warp. So a good idea is to, to remember to put it or keep putting it back into the box, making sure that it's going to fit uh, for if, if it starts to warp or if you do this where I was building this and it wasn't quite being built where it was going uh, straight up it's got this angle to it so if you notice something like that then obviously starting to uh, glue the layers in such a way where you're counteracting that uh, lean that it uh, was happening so and then from that point uh, Additionally, trying to put it back into the box and making sure it fits. So with having used that preview sled, what I ended up having to do was having another piece on the base, which uh, simulates the width or thickness of that preview sled, because when it's all put together and glued, it doesn't need the sled anymore. But you need that in order for it to fit into the box. So if it's too thick, uh, something you can do is just putting down like a folder and stepping on it, just using your own body weight instead of going to the store and getting, you know, a thinner piece of uh, foam core. So putting that back in uh, to the box. And here cutting out uh, a backing to it because one of the ideas of this is that you're trapping light uh, in the back and uh, obviously you could use foam core you could use part of uh, you could use the same cardstock uh, but I'm just using leftover uh, sheets of uh, artistic paper there and taping them together again not as you know attractive as maybe using the cardstock or the the foam core but realizing that you're just going to turn the lights off anyway, and, and that's how you end up you viewing the project. So taping this onto there, realizing that everything did fit, but it was it was very snug as far as the LED light strip in the back. So what I ended up doing was um, creating these extensions, sort of how I did earlier, uh, instead of, uh, especially at this point, redoing the box would be a pain. Uh, but to, of course, as well, save on materials. But gluing on some uh, extensions for extensions to make the box itself a little bit bigger to give that LED light strip more room in which to uh, float around back there. So then having taped the uh, backing on there, just doing it by flipping the box upside down and then applying uh, scotch tape. So a lot of people when they build these they just permanently glue everything into place whereby I think they can only just remove the, the light strip. And with these as I said in the beginning I want to be able to remove the design and uh, put something else in there so I'm not constantly you know uh, building new boxes. So here putting in the design, having put in that first uh, layer to simulate the preview sled, having cut out a little rectangle for the LED light strip to go through. You can of course create a couple of notches uh, with foam core in order to help keep this light strip in place a little bit better than what you see here. But once that gets installed, there you have it. 
Canyon light box. So be sure and check out the channel to uh, see the other one that I've done, and hopefully there will be more in the future. And thanks for watching.